Football is where we start this edition of the Sportsmax Zone. Well, the first leg of the UEFA Europa League semi-finals took place today and one tie saw Bundesliga champions by Leverkusen take their unbeaten record of, of the season to the Eternal City and the Stadio Olimpico to take on AS Roma. We have the highlights. Edging possession at the moment, 52%. Oh, it's a great pick out, and Leverkusen have been opened up. Chini, one of the chief beneficiaries. Lovely take by Paradez, and off the top of the crossbar by Lukaku. That's Frimpong through on goal, and into the side netting. What an opportunity for Leverkusen. Ladley to out jump Smalling oh it's a chance for Birds and Leverkusen go in front and set up Birds goalkeeper out of position he just rolled the ball in and what a start for the German champions Borussia Mönchengladbach Rome opened up again by Frimpong and this time Sevilla makes the save and holds on just. Birds. Adley. Rivaldo. And that was far just wide by Frimpong. Andrik. Birds. Shot was always sliding wide. Lukaku and studied just wide by Pellegrini. Terrific hit by Pellegrini. It's great to utilize his bench. His birds. Pimpong alongside Grimaldo. Stanisic. Oh, a superb from Robert Andrik. Phenomenal hit. Second for Leverkusen, and it's a goal which has hit Roma for six. Angelina. Oh, it's tough for the goalkeeper. Didn't get that. Abraham over the top. Oh, what a miss. And then from close in, Tammy Abram heading over. She's got four extra minutes. And that is enough. There's two goals enough for Leverkusen going into the second leg in Germany next Thursday. All right, so our Sportsmax football analyst, Ben Davies, joins us to break down the action. Good afternoon, Ben. How are you? Yeah, very well, Mariah. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, well, we saw a lot of football action today in the Europa League. And of course, Bayer Leverkusen, they continue their Bundesliga form. And, you know, they've really been dominating. And I think today they would feel really good, Ben, because they got revenge against an Aston Villa team that would have defeated them at the same stage last year. Yeah, I mean, Leverkusen went to Rome today, you know, to the Stadio Olimpico on that unbeaten run of 46 games, you know. They've had a fantastic season. And who would bet against them? Mariah finishing an unprecedented season eh, with that European League Cup trophy, standing alongside the Mannschafter and the German Cup in their trophy cabinet room. Um, you know, it, it, it started off, obviously, you know, with Roma trying to attack and um, catch Leverkusen on the counter-attack. They had a few flurries, you saw earlier, that uh, Lukaku hit the bar with a header. Al Shirari went through, trying to get uh, past the Leverkusen defence, trying to get a cross in, you know. But it all fizzled down to nothing really, because as soon as that mistake was made by Karlsdorp, you know, Roma crumbled. They didn't really have an answer, you know, to Leverkusen's persistent play. Frimpong was the danger. So was Verts who slotted in that first goal. 
And you know, Roma are under De Rossi are known for their late comebacks, but there was no comeback today, you know. And in the second half, you saw that great shot from Robert Andrick, you know, into that uh, left-hand corner of Svila. And the game was was too much for Roma, you know. They just couldn't stay with Bayer Leverkusen's quality. And I can't see Roma coming back next week to beat Leverkusen at home, not in Germany. Yeah. So, <laughs> go on. Really, really unfortunate for AS Roma today, especially because of how they dominated last season against this Bayer Leverkusen team. You touched on it, Romelu Lukaku's missed opportunity. There was also a Tammy Abraham missed opportunity. Why is it, Ben, that, you know, AS Roma got opportunities today? They had chances. I think the mistake was that they were not capitalising on those chances. What do you think can be the reasoning behind that? Of course, I mean... Leverkusen showed their clinical way, didn't they? And they've been doing it all season. And, of course, when you see Lukaku, what, he scored 11 goals this season. He's been in and out of the team. Tammy Abraham as well, coming back from injury. You know, they haven't had a consistent run of games. And you see the rustiness come out, you know, when it comes to a critical time in the game when they have to be clinical and put chances away. So you see it in all football walks of life basically you know even here in anguilla you see that <laughs> yeah how much credit goes to chabi alonso for what he has been able to achieve with this by leverkusen side of course getting the best out of all the players yeah i mean looking at Xavi alonso obviously he's had a fantastic season and he's done a great job and you have to look at where he's come from you know he he played under Mourinho, guardiola and benitez and you can see that he's sculptured his coaching, you know, on a mixture of their philosophies. And obviously, he he has his own way as well. It's a fantastic job that he's done this season, you know. And who would bet against him, as I said, in getting that treble, you know, which he's going after. And the willingness and the strength and mentality to want to keep winning games. As you know, winning breeds confidence. And um, so you can see, you know, it, it's... It's, hard, it's very hard to win a treble in any European footballing country. But, um, you know, it, it's there. They're a team and they've played well and they've done a great body of work all season. Yeah, Ben, are Leverkusen the favourites to win this title now? Liverpool were favourites a couple of months ago, but uh, their exit now leaves the door open for another team to win. I think Leverkusen was widely regarded or were widely regarded as the second favourites. Do they automatically take that favourite slot now? I, I think they are favourites, Lance. Obviously, Atlanta put paid to, to Liverpool's chances, didn't they? And you probably could see Atlanta and Leverkusen in the final. And obviously, we'll be talking about the Marseille-Atlanta game soon. But, um, yeah, I mean, you said, <laughs> Leverkusen, again, they just go strength, strength to strength, don't they? And it, it's just carrying on yeah. from game to game. Yeah. Yeah, they're a European record extending 47 games in all competitions unbeaten. A, a, a lofty label to hold, uh, given that they aren't considered a European powerhouse. The, the record they've uh, taken, they took it from Juventus, who are regarded as a European powerhouse. So um, how much credit or how much bragging rights would Bayer Leverkusen hold to um, have a record like this? Because, as I said, they aren't. I'd widely regard it as a, a European powerhouse in football. No, I think, Lance, you're looking for consistency, aren't you, in the European competitions to be rated as a powerhouse. And obviously, Leverkusen have just won the German league, haven't they? Is it for the first time? Which is a bit of a, you know, having seen Leverkusen teams over the years. Because I know a few years ago, I think they gave Manchester United a hiding <laughs> and, uh, beat, and knocked them out of the Champions League. So it's it all about consistency and continuing that run. And I'm glad that Xavi Alonso, you know, is staying with Leverkusen because then he can pit his wits against the tougher teams in the Champions League next year. So we'll see really what they're made out of, won't we? Yeah, I put this question to Brent Sancho um, this week and I, I touched on it last week as well. And uh, you referenced Xavi Alonso's success uh, just a few minutes ago in your assessment of how well Leverkusen are doing but how would you rate Javi Alonso's um, 
impact as a as a coach who is still learning the job as i said yesterday he he is just you know maybe four years into five years into his 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 career as a as a manager and it's not an easy job yeah well i mean he's had a fantastic first season with leverkusen and again just like we said leverkusen have to prove a consistency in european competition he has to prove a consistency in his coaching and he's got off to a great start and we just have to wait and see how he gets on as said next year in the champions league and continuing in the german league see if he can do a double or a treble you know it depends how long he can stay there and obviously other clubs will be knocking at the door like they were this season i think Bayern munich and liverpool were after him seeing uh, that tuchel and klopp uh, going out the door in those two clubs respectively so We'll have to wait and see, Lance, won't we? It's only time. Yeah, and we'll also be waiting to see what happens in that second leg. I can't wait to see how, you know, the overall result turns out. Well, in the other semi-final, the first leg, Marseille welcomed Atalanta to the start velodrome. Let's take a look now how that one panned out. Four appearances for Atalanta have come in this competition for the goalkeeper. Go, coming in second. He's a regular league goalkeeper now, he's on the bench tonight. Was a really good chance here, and Atalanta lead, and he's at it again, Skamaka. But as the build-up continued, they had plenty of time to readjust. And look at the space there as he drifted away from Murillo, between Murillo and Enrique. They've taken a real gamble on the left-hand side of their defence here in Marseille tonight. Shooting opportunity. Watch him! Bent in beautifully. Chancellor and Bemba. Oh, was a little bit close. But as it comes out, what a hit this is. Marseille now look to counter. Berra two, they've got a really important break on here now. I mean, Harrit plays left. Here's Aubameyang. Can he finish for Marseille? No, he can't. It's a massive chance on the counter. That's what they've been waiting for. Brilliant intervention to deny his old club and then to 60 minutes went off. There two holds it up. Could not be went to place it. Goodness me, that's not too far away. Bending. Not enough. Didn't dip. In all of their games. Not too bummy angle, little flick on. Merlin's there. Oh bummy up. Skips inside Scalvini, four men around him. Opens up a gap here, then for an eye off the post. What a startling intervention that would have been to the game. Set himself well, slipped though just as he struck it. And just off the angle of post and bar. Now here's Lookman, and I wonder if Marseille will rue that. Can Atalanta catch him here now? Alexei Moranchik steps inside, shoots and very nearly scores what would have been the first leg winner. Time's going to beat them, I think. And time is going to give Atalanta a very, very good first leg result. All right, so of course, that match ending one all between the two teams. Well, Ben is still with us. Ben, Marseille would feel a bit hard done because they dominated for most of the game, but the result does not reflect that. No, this game was always going to be a cagey affair, Mariah, you know, with uh, both teams quite strong defensively, and Marseille were relying a lot on Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. So he's got, he scored 10 goals in this competition. You know, and you saw there in the clip that he had a chance to uh, score, but he wasn't clinical, you know, went past the post. They hit the post as well and the bar. Atalanta were probably the slight favourites in this game. And you saw Skamaka, their striker, score a lovely goal. And then uh, Bemba, you know, nine minutes later, scored the equaliser. Another lovely right foot curling shot. So it was a game where both teams could have won it. But I'm fearful again for Marseille because I don't rate their chances going to Bergamo next week. Yeah. And, yeah, 
because uh, they're not very good travellers, you know? Yeah. So um, it's going to be a tough game for them. Yeah, really, really unfortunate for Pei Emmerich Aubameyang today, missing a couple of chances. How dependent is this Marseille team on Aubameyang? Well, very, very dependent, as you can see. As I, I think he scored 27 goals this season, Mariah. In all competition in the Europa League, so they are dependent on him. He's, he's an out and out goal scorer, has been, you know, for most of his career. You know, the success he had at Arsenal didn't go so well, you know, when he went to Chelsea, but he seemed to be uh, having that late dawn, you know, uh, and doing well with Marseille domestically, as for sure. Yeah, Ben, in our review of the, the earlier match with Bayer Leverkusen, we were discussing who are now favourites, and you did mention that Atalanta having um, knocked out Liverpool, who were the tournament favourites, would, would, would have a shout. Um, based on their performance today and your narrative that you think that they'll be OK for the return game, um, how much of a challenge do you think they could be for, let's project Bayer Leverkusen getting to the final, <laughs> which you expect? Yeah, uh, Atalanta have a very strong work ethic, Lance. You know, they, they work man to man, they press high, you know, they don't give opposition players much chance. You know, they close them down very quickly. So I think that's going to be a very game, you know, once Atalanta get through over Marseille. It's going to be a very interesting game, obviously, because you know how Leverkusen like to play and they, they, they like to go down the wings a lot as well, as well as Atlanta. So it's, it's going to be very interesting, you know, very interesting game. Yeah, I want to put something to you, Ben, because Atalanta's stocks rising now in the UEFA Champions League has a lot to do with how efficiently they got rid of Liverpool. But I, I want to suggest mm. that Liverpool's form, especially domestically, uh, suggests to me that Liverpool have fallen off. You know, domestically, they have won just one of their last four games and they have had losses in those four games to Crystal Palace and, and Everton. So maybe it is that an Atlanta victory over the Liverpool that we are now seeing shouldn't be so highly regarded. It was, it was a bit of a shock. I think everyone was shocked when they saw the 3-0 score at Liverpool. Yes. At Anfield, you know, where Liverpool are basically unbeaten for a long period of time, you know, going back to last season. It was a shock. But as you alluded to, Liverpool have been slightly wavering, I think, since Manchester United beat them in the FA Cup. You know, there they seemed to be a drop-off. And then, as you know, the fact that Klopp is leaving has a definite effect on the players. You know, they know that he's not going to be here next year. So they may have dropped that 5 6%, you know, in their performance, which is, is quite alarming, really, for a club of Liverpool standing. Yeah. Um, so what do you consider to be Atalanta's strong point, then, as they look to go all the way in the championship? Because I think I agree that Leverkusen would be my favourites now to win. But, you know, in, in, in this kind of matchup, you've got to respect Atalanta's chances. So what strategically are Atalanta's strong points and tools that they could use to go all the way in the UEFA Europa League? Well, Gasparini has installed all that man-for-man fucking -man uh, lance to a T, you know, and he does get his players to close down opposition uh, players down quickly. And they're very well organised. They've got a great work ethic. They, they're intense, you know, and they work hard when they don't have the ball. And, of course, they, they're free-flowing when they do have the ball. So they have Skamaka, you know, ex-West Ham striker, who is one of the top scorers in the Europa League. I think it's six now he scored, including that one today. And he's getting stronger. He's a physical specimen, six foot five, you know, and um, he's out to prove, some, prove something. And he's an Italian international as well. And then he has the, the other supporting systems around him. So it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, looking forward to that when it goes through. Yeah, Ben, seven days till the second legs. Can't wait for that. And of course, you know, we'll be chatting with you again soon. We want to thank you so much for your time and we'll talk again. Lovely. Lovely to speak to you, Brian Lance. Yeah, take care. See you soon. All right. Take care. Of course, Ben Davies there, our Sportsmax football analyst. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. And also remember, Europa League lives on your home of champions. Break time.